Ali is an imam who spent four years at this prison, helping people like Hassani explore their faith. He believes it can be an important part of their rehabilitation. Religion is important to inmates uh, because it connects them to something bigger than their, their circumstance. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your boy Jesse Keegan. And your girl Fanny Lungu. We are Fanny Jesse. So right about now we're going to do another reaction. But before we get into the reaction, guys, we want to thank everybody out there who's been subscribing to our channel. We're the realest MVP. And if you're new to this channel, we are Fanny and Jesse, and we do a lot of reaction videos. And if you have any reaction videos with you, just let us know in the comment section below. We do any type of reaction videos. Uh, don't look at it like, ah, oh, we do a lot of religious. It's because of people who are actually giving us this reaction. So we find it, it's a rude note to react to them. Anyway, if you have any kind of reaction, any kind of, uh, you know, um, let's say funny reaction, if you have any, uh, what else, music type of reaction, just let us know in the comment section and we're going to do it for you. Or if you want to be more interesting, you can give us uh, just any, I don't know, just any type of audio. Yeah, any type is fine. Yeah, any type. Yes. Yeah, any any prank videos you want to, to react to, we we'll be sure. What? Any pranks to do. Yeah, any pranks to do, we can do it or just yeah, just feel free to tell us anything. Anyway, um and also uh we wanna thank everybody out there for giving us uh, seven thousand four hundred subscribers with the real MVP. We wanna get to ten thousand subscribers. We want to like spread the information to everybody out there. I know we, we are here to learn, we are here to understand, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, to understand what? We are here to learn. Yeah, we are here to learn and we are here to also, you know, uh, get information and be able to, to know. Uh, We're learning and spreading the message as well. Yes, learning, yes, learning and spreading the message. Yeah. Sure, so anyway, without any further ado, so today we're going to react to why inmates are converting to Islam. Yeah, so this is what we're going to do. So without any further ado, guys, let's get it. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. It's time for afternoon prayers, and the Muslim inmates in this California state prison are doing what was once forbidden, having an Islamic worship service. People couldn't gather in groups uh, to teach and to practice the religion. Of the 3,832 inmates at Solano Prison, the chaplain estimates about 5% are practicing Muslims. The prison doesn't track religious identity, partly because it's so fluid. And religious expression is a barometer for how Islam has evolved within the U.S. penitentiary system. Hey guys, I'm Shreen, and today we've traveled to Solano Prison in Vacaville, California to explore how the world's fastest growing religion has had to fight to find a home in prison. When I became Muslim, I was given a a set of uh, principles, do this, don't do that, when in doubt, don't. That's Jesse Burleson, who people here know as Hassani. He's been in prison for 31 years. Hassani is one of the practicing Muslims at Solano Prison, and they're part of the millions of people behind bars in the U.S. In fact, the United States has the largest prison population in the world. The more than 2.3 million people it had incarcerated by the end of 2017 were more than any other developed nation. That number includes inmates at federal, state, and county prisons. And it's growing. In a place where your housing, meals, and recreation time is highly constrained by rules, finding a way to practice your faith can be difficult. These inmates have figured out a way to infuse their faith into their sentences. One of the things that started me seeking something different was I was looking at the people that were around me who were older than I was, who had been in prison longer than me, and who had been on that same negative, self-destructive path, and me not being satisfied with what I was seeing in them. And uh, at that time, I started going to 
religious services. It didn't matter if it was Muslim, Christian, Jewish. I went seeking a better way, and I believed in God, so I, I knew that the only way I was going to change was through God. He's just one of the Muslims that Solano chaplain Muhammad Ali interacts with on a daily basis. Ali is an imam who spent four years at this prison, helping people like Hassani explore their faith. He believes it can be an important part of their rehabilitation. Religion is important to inmates uh, because it connects them to something bigger than their, their circumstance. You have people who, you know, who are here in prison and there's a lot of things you can't control. Um, whether it's your, your eating, whether it's your living uh, condition, it really helps human beings feel a sense of connectedness to something beyond what's, what's right in front of them. But Islam's journey in penitentiaries has been complicated by prison culture and legal challenges. Though nationally, Muslims make up 1% of the U.S. population, that number is expected to double by 2050. Some of that growth specifically comes from inmates converting to Islam behind bars. Islam is known for having a particularly strong presence in prisons. In fact, more people convert to Islam per capita than any other religion. Nationwide, Muslims make up 10 to 15 percent of prisoners. Ali even said he has one to two inmates convert to Islam monthly, though that's not his goal. What makes those statistics resonate more is knowing how difficult it was to get Islam accepted as a recognized religion within some prisons. The prison administration, through their uh, custody officers, wouldn't allow groups of Muslims to congregate over three. And when they did, they would break, they would break them up. That's Abdul Rauf Nasir, and he spent 30 years using his Islamic faith to help inmates in correctional institutions. He considered it social justice work and an active part of his faith. Back when he started in the 1970s, he says the prison system was full of subtle discrimination against Muslims. Some Muslim inmates at this prison sued in 1996 for greater access to religious services. Their demands included hiring a full-time Muslim chaplain and the ability to attend Friday prayers without penalties like demerits for leaving work. Eventually, they did receive a full-time imam and their other demands. Prison officials dispute this account. They say Muslim inmates were never denied access to their religion, and instead the constraints were reflective of staffing and organizational issues that were resolved. Nationwide, the legal pushes continue today. A 2013 report says that Muslims submitted the most religious discrimination complaints out of any other religious group in prison. Islam and Muslim uh, organizations in prison, for the most part, have seen to be powerful because they've been there a long time. They have challenged the status quo of the prison system itself, legally and physically. That quality of questioning power is easily identifiable with one of the religion's most notable converts. Malcolm X, his narrative is prominent, and so that attracts people toward Islam. And then the reformative value that they find in that, the hope that it gives that I can survive in prison, Malcolm survived in prison. Malcolm X's legacy still resonates today, more than 50 years after his death. While serving a prison sentence, then named Malcolm Little, converted to the Nation of Islam in 1952. He found mainstream Islam years later and felt it was much more racially inclusive than the nation. But as Muslims, we will be Muslims. I will try and teach the religion of Islam among the so-called Negroes and make them Muslims. Aside from spiritual guidance and the ability to change your life around, Another reason Nasir says some incarcerated people are drawn to the faith is for another reason entirely, how prisons are organized. A central organizing principle in prison is containing the threat of violence. Inmates are housed and classified according to the risk of violence they pose. Here at Solano, inmates are housed dormitory style. Those that pose a higher risk are housed in cells like this with armed guards. In their downtime, the crew that inmates spend time with matters because they're the ones that also offer protection. So what does any of this have to do with practicing Islam in prison? Well, Nasir explains that your brothers in the faith can actually help protect you behind bars, and that source of support transcends race. Islam does challenge the strict rules of race in prison because if a person of another ethnic group besides African-American becomes a Muslim, then he's embraced in the Islamic community, and he's not only embraced, he's protected from outside pressures that other groups may place against them. And being in prison isn't necessarily that type of situation to where, you know, you need to join a group to be safe. Uh, that's not, hasn't been my experience. Uh, but I would say uh, being a part of a community in prison 
uh, is definitely beneficial in that regard. What he's really describing is support. And the support that incarcerated Muslims require is different than their free brethren. In fact, there are several things about prison that change how Islam is practiced. There's no Quran app, no call to prayer from your cell phone. And being Muslim here is about survival in a completely different way than it is outside. It does afford some opportunity for uh, inmates to think about their rehabilitation, think about meaning uh, in life, think about who they want to be as a person while here or when leaving here. Just because religion might help some people survive prison doesn't mean they'll continue the practice after release. Nasir's seen people let go of the faith when they get out. But Hassani, who's just days from release, has his sights set on making Islam's most important journey for Muslims, the pilgrimage called Hajj. So I think for me that making the Hajj as, as, as one of my goals, primary goals, if I keep that as a primary goal, that I will be successful and not only stand on the path, but doing everything that I need to do in order to get off parole, save some money, and make the Hajj. I learned so much about incarceration in this story. If you want to learn more, check out Ear Hustle, the podcast out of San Quentin Prison. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and let us know in the comments what prison stories you want us to cover next. Wow, what do you think? I mean, it's good being part of something. Like, you really just have to find something that sits well with you, so in life. Yeah, sure. When you're trying to, um, find a way in life, I guess, or the purpose of your being on this earth. Good for the ones that are converting. Whatever religion they're choosing, good for them. But I was thinking, but this is just prison. So these ones converting, don't you think they go back to their old ways once they leave? You never know, probably. Also, at the same time, I'm thinking it's like some sort of rehab for some people, because now you're being given something to think about. But it's their choice. Yeah, it's, this exists. Mm -hmm. You want to be part of it. You're being given something that can keep you occupied. It's yeah. not that I'm coming to you with force or anything. But, but okay, it's not only Muslim, yeah? Probably there are a lot of religions that are yeah, so they are put on the table, choose what you want. Probably they found the one that no, not resonates. You don't have to choose Yeah, anything. Yeah, but it's your choice. You get it. So probably you just find, you look for one that resonates with you, maybe with what you want or what you feel like it, it's going to make you a better person or something like that. And boom, most of them go for for uh, for Islam, yeah. which is a good thing. It's, it's, it's not a bad thing. You get it. Even if they're comparison to Christians, it's, it's just a good thing. It's not a bad thing. And that's like you said, this is a religion of peace, yeah? Yeah, it's a religion. So when they're here, they're also looking after each other. Yeah. Yeah, Because yeah. asalam al means peace be upon you or something. But my thing is, why not protect everyone, though? Protecting everyone is also another thing, yeah. Thank you know, there's what we call self-preservation, yeah? You have to take care of yourself first. Imagine you're, you're in a group of people and then you're all conforming to one in one religion, you ought to protect your brother first. That's the way it should be? No, I'm, I'm, you have to protect your brother first? No, no, I'm just saying like, just in other... Everyone like for example, you have a brother and sister. Anyone if anything happens... Is your brother and your sister. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just trying to put it in a layman's language. You have a brother and sister and something comes up, you ought to protect them first. Is that the way it should be? Is my question. Even if I'm saying I like, that person will get... Maybe get what I like about them is the unity that they have. If they say like you know what, let's protect our people. It's, for me, it's not bad. If they choose, if, if, if they choose to do that, it's they fine. It's well and good. My you question is, isn't everyone in this prison mm -hmm. their brother? Of course, they are their brother. It doesn't mean that you're not. A, if, if you're not a Muslim, you're not my brother or whatnot. So shouldn't protection extend to everyone else? Of course, it should extend. But according to them, probably if you're a Muslim, there's more that there's more of that connection. They get. Because you have, yeah, because you have common interests. It's just like when I meet you and we don't have any common interests, there's no way I'd be like, ah, okay, I don't know her, but okay, let me just help. But if you if if you there's common interests, like, ah, yeah, this this is this 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 is a Muslim brother, man. This is you've people before, yeah. What people. common interests did you have? 
I've helped people before, not due to common interest though. Exactly. Yeah. What do you think? Why do you think people are converting? Or what do you think is going on now in this world that people are trying? Because I read there's a, there's a guy on our comment section below who said like, is it a certain percent of, uh, of people are converting to, like Muslims is growing at a rapid rate now. It is. Yeah, people are converting. What is really happening? Are people actually, um, uh, there's an, uh, something called the awakening that is coming out and people are realizing that this is the, the true path? What do you think? If that's what they, they've chosen in life, then it's well and good. I don't know what's happening, but if that's what's happening, it's well and good. Yeah, I mean... I mean, people shouldn't just convert for the sake of converting. I like the, the people that comment saying, um, I like the fact that you're exploring other religions as well. Yeah, true. Because that's, you really have to look into other things before you can just make that simple, simple thing. I shouldn't convert to, um, just for the sake I shouldn't of become converting. an atheist. Yeah, just because Jesse says being an atheist is yeah. the best thing that could happen. I mean, someone life. shouldn't force you. It should come from your heart. No, I'm not talking about force. I'm yeah, no, but. Like peer pressure. Yeah, there's peer pressure. Or even, even guys, 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 even the comment section below, there are people in there, that one or two people, they're putting so much pressure. Get it? It shouldn't. It shouldn't come out of someone's mouth to, to to tell you do that, do this. It comes from your heart. What Muslims? Yeah. There are also other ones that actually Christians that actually say mean things. Yes. If you wake up today and you feel like you want to convert, you want to be a Muslim, a Christian, then it's upon you. I mean, it's it's something that your heart has to accept it. You do, you don't just have to go out there blindly. You have to to to, to see if I go in there. Am I going to get what I really want? If it makes you get what you really want in life and gives you purpose, then boom, go for it. That's another thing I wanted to already spoke about the purpose thing. I think in prison people are converting because you're looking at that other person and just seeing that's so peaceful in their life. Yeah, of course. No troubles, I mean, you're already in prison and you found like, you just don't find yourself mixed up in commotion. Like and the that guy, it's another person to be interested in what you're doing. So like, you convert and you learn about it, just yeah. begin understanding it. Like the guy, one of the inmates will say this. that when he came in, he found all the people into, they found all the people uh, practicing that religion and they were in peace. So he felt like. Oh, the guy that was talking in the beginning? Yeah. He, he mentioned like, all the other religions too. Yeah. And he felt like if these people can be in that position, then. They are peaceful and then everything is going well in prison. And why should I not go into this religion and, and you know what, be part of them? Because since there is so much peacefulness and, and you know, something like that. Sometimes curiosity could be the best thing that could happen to you. Yeah, curiosity killed the cat, but it can be the best thing. <laughs> Sometimes cats are the best. Anyway, no. Let us know in the comment section what do you think. Do you like cats? <laughs> Like that you're going to what I think about this video. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think about this video down in the comment section below. Yes, what do you think? Do you think that um why do you think people are I mean, converting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let us know. What do you think? Why, why people are converting convert? and why inmates are converting? Well. Yeah, why are people converting and why inmates are converting too? Just let us know in the comment you know, section below. Inmates are still people. Yeah, that's <laughs> by people we mean people that are not in prison. Oh well, yeah, people are not in prison. Just like normal civilian out there and inmates. Just let us know in the comment section below. Why are they converting to Islam? If you have a good explanation, just let us know in the comment section below. I mean people want to learn, people want to hear that. And you it's get... really funny. Everyone is converting to Islam. Yeah. People cause... are converting. And now even in prison it's converting. I don't really get it. Probably I should go into more research and find out. Probably there's something Why out people there. are converting? Yeah. Anyway, um, and also there's one thing I really want to understand. Why is it that when the Muslims want to pray, they normally bring out the mat, like the, the carpet? What's the use of the carpet? So uh, you, can kneel, you can kneel on it. Is it because of the um, kneeling or is it because of uh, just uh, just for it to be there or something? Just let us in the comment section below. Uh, just put it in the most layman's language uh, so that I understand. So you can have a place to pray from. Mm -hmm. Is that what you think? Yep. 
Okay, just let us know in the comment section. What do you like? What's the purpose of the carpet? Anyway, guys, if you feel like you reacted to this video in a better way, just give us a thumbs up and don't forget to go down in the comment section. Tell us exactly what you feel about our reaction and what you feel about this video over here. Why inmates are converting into Islam? Just let us know in the comment section below. What do you think? If there's anything that's going to help us or help anybody out, out there, just let us know in the comment section below. And the most important thing, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The more you keep on subscribing, the more you give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you a better, better content. And last but not least, we're going to see you in the next video. And peace out.